Alléluia. 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 Amen. My soul looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary. Savior divine, now hear me why I pray, take all my guilt away, oh let me from this day. Once again, my brethren, you are welcome into the presence of the Most High God. This is the 11th day of the month of uh, November 2024. Hallelujah. The time now is uh, 10.38 a.m. GMT, my local time here in Lagos, Nigeria. Hallelujah. The best nation country in the world with the best people in the world, on the best continent in the world. See, we are highly privileged in this part of the world. Hallelujah. And I'm sure wherever you are also, God has also done you equally good. He has not located us here by accident. He has put us here in line with his grand design to fulfill purpose. And of course, that purpose we shall fulfill in Jesus' name. And you too, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, you will fulfill his purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we pray and go into the world straight away? Our Father and our God, we bless your holy name. The ancient of days, we adore you. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. We thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for energy. We thank you for all that you did for us last week and uh, including yesterday and the beginning of the month, the beginning of the year. Father, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Well, we are extremely grateful. Once again, I commit this meeting this morning into your hands. Take it over from me. Take it over from your people. Let there be receptive hearts in the lives of your people for your word this morning, so that their lives will be fruit outwards in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This topic we are speaking this morning 
is standing firm in his promise or promises. Standing firm in his promise and his promises. Uh, the Bible refers to God, whom we are talking about standing firm in his promise this morning, as the beginning and the end. The beginning means before him there was nothing. The end means after him there will be nothing. What does that mean? That means everything is within him. That's why the Bible also says that he, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being because he is the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Let's take for example, every human being has a beginning, every human being has an end. What's the beginning of every human being? The day that man or woman is born, that's the beginning. That's the entrance into the world. The day he breathes or she breathes her last breath on the planet, that's the end. That's for that every for every human being. So, between the beginning when you are born and the last breath of your life, every other thing you do is regarded as your, what you call it, antecedents, your, your story, your storyline on the planet Earth. And it spans only a certain period of time, maybe 50 years, 100 years, 120 years, 80 years or thereabout. But when you talk of the beginning, of all beginnings, <laughs> hallelujah, before the heavens were made, before the earth was made, he was already there. Do you want to count it as trillions of years? Billions of years, trillions of years ago, he was there. Trillions of years from now, he will still be there. The Bible also has is describe him as the eternity. The one that has no beginning, the one that has no end. Hallelujah. So when people now translate from here to the other side of life, they are going into what they call eternity. No beginning anymore. All the beginning of what they did here has been wiped away. Then the new life continues there, which has no end. So that eternity is also inside of him. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, he is the eternity himself. Okay, maybe we should extend it further beyond this planet Earth. Take it into the galaxies, the entire universe. His existence spans the entire universe. You can travel 250 million years with the fastest human aircraft that has ever been made or that will ever be made, you will not get to the end of this universe. So, when you talk of the beginning of the entire universe, you can know that that expansion, expanse space is not even enough to describe him. Hallelujah. If he stretches his hands for wherever he is right now, maybe in the heavenlies or wherever he decides to be, Across the entire universe, it will go around, the sand will go around the entire circle. That's the beginning and the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Entire circle. So, when we have a topic this morning which says that stand firm in, the, in his promises, talking about this great God that says something to you concerning your life then you have no reason to doubt it. I've given you the idea of his greatness, just an idea <laughs> of his greatness. It's far much and bigger than that, far much more than that and bigger than that. 
that just that's just a, a, a teaser of his greatness. A God that is this great will promise you something. My advice is that you better believe it. That's the end of the matter. Once he has said it, that's the end of the matter. Abraham asked God, he said, Hey, God, I have no child of yours. When God told him, Your seed shall inherit the earth. Abraham said, I don't have any seed. The only one I have is all these my servants here. He said, Don't worry. You will have your own children. Abraham was about 90 years old or more than or around that time. He said, you don't worry yourself, you have your own children. And that promise came to pass. By the time Abraham was 100, that was 10 years after. By the time Abraham was 100, he, he gave back to Isaac. Isaac gave back to Esau and Jacob. And on and on and on and on. So if the God's promise concerning Abraham could be fulfilled in his life, you can be rest assured whatever he has promised you will also be fulfilled. Whether the devils like it or not, they shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. God never says, says a word that returns back to him without accomplishing that which he has designed it for. He never. Once he has said it, consider it done. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 62, Verse uh, 11 or 12 there. He said, God has spoken once. He has spoken only once. Twice have I heard. All power belongs to God. He has just spoken once. And I've heard it twice. All power belongs to him. All powers on the planet Earth belongs to him. He is also the beginning and the end of all powers. <laughs> ah, I'm sure you know that's, 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 that's powerful. Let's put it this way. There are so-called countries that call themselves superpowers in this world today. They are, they are, we are superpowers. We have power. We have nuclear this, we have nuclear that. If an earthquake should open up wherever they store the armaments today, God says, let there be an earthquake where they are storing all the armaments today and swallow up all their nuclear arsenal, all their military powers. That's the end of it. <laughs> That's the end of their powers. They start from ground zero again. Let all the witches and wizards and the demons and devils gather together and say they want to do something against you. And say they want to do something against you. Once God says it cannot be done, that's the end of all their plans and programs concerning you. That's the end of it. Or once God says, Stay off. That's mine. That person you want to attack, you want to, you want to, you want to do that evil plan against is my body, is my child. They will, they will disappear with speed. So that God will not speak to you. That powerful God will not speak to you and give you a promise concerning one challenge in your life or the other. And you have the audacity not to believe him. That's what I will regard as being tantamount to foolishness. And maybe some semblance of stupidity too. The God that was yesterday, Hebrews 13, 8. The, one that, the God that was yesterday... The God that is today, as I'm speaking to you, he's still there today. And the same God that will be there 1,000 years away from now, or a billion years away from now, 
will still be there long after you are gone and your generations after generations are gone. He's still there. He will now say something and you say you don't believe it. <laughs> uh, somebody said uh, when you do the same thing every day and you expect a different result, there is a definition of insanity. This disbelief of this great God is also a higher level of insanity for any human being. I said it before, Psalm 62, verse 11 or 12. He said, God has spoken once, twice have I heard. All power belongs to him. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was in God, and the word itself was God. In the beginning, Genesis 1 and 2, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon mm. the face mm. of the deep, and the Spirit of God brewed over the face of the deep. And God spoke, Hallelujah. In the midst of the deep, the darkness of the deep, he said, let there be light. And instantly there was light. That kind of God's promises, he said, it is done. You are healed. You are delivered. You are restored. You are, you are, you are saved. And you say you won't believe it. Now you know what I'm saying is the definition of insanity. What the big powers on this planet Earth are boasting about their powers to oppress other people can be wiped away in a, in a, in a second. In a second. What the enemy is using to oppress you, to hinder you, to obstruct you, to limit you, can be wiped away in a second. Once they have spoken it, that's the end of the matter. Because they are all subject to him. All of them are subject to him. But you know the irony of the things that are happening on the planet Earth? The opposition, which are all those in the kingdom of darkness, they are always orchestrating things to, for human beings not to believe in this great God. They're always working all kinds of schemes and agendas to create deception and lies about this great God. That's why God is also sending people like us to go and give, open the eyes of understanding of people so that they can bypass the shenanigans, the whips and caprices, the lies, fake counterfeit of those in the kingdom of God to enlighten and broaden the minds of the people about him. That's why I'm here this morning again to brighten your eyes of understanding, to enlighten your eyes of understanding about this great God. That once he has spoken it, that's the end of the matter. That's the end of the all conclusion, all agreements. That's the end of the matter. So no matter how bad the situation in your life might be, no matter the challenges you might be facing, no matter the plans and programs and orchestrations from the pit of hell against you, once God has spoken concerning that issue, consider it done. Hallelujah. Consider it done. It's a done deal. <laughs> uh, this morning, I pray that your eyes of understanding will be opened to hear and hear clearly and begin to walk in the footsteps of what he has promised you. I've always telling people on this platform, I said, name a God that can rival this God I'm talking about, that can do wonders, that can do the miraculous, that can turn around the captivity of people like Zion, change their times and seasons for good, that can put laughter in their mouth. Name, give, give me the name of such a God. I want to know if it ever exists. Then I'll tell you straight away, you are falling into deception because there's no other God like him. 
Hallelujah. There's none, absolutely none. Name any other God that created the sun and the moon. Name the God that created the planet that we are stay, staying on, that is standing on zero pillars, just standing in the space. Name that God for me. I want to know if it exists. <laughs> hey, I know a God in India. I know a God in China. I know a God in Nigeria. I know a God in America. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> if you can name that God and that God can raise up his head and say, I'm the one, he will, he, I'll, give you, I'll give you five minutes. You will be annihilated. You will, will, be, will, will be consumed by fire. <laughs> Because this God is a jealous God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even those gods will not, they, they themselves will never show up. <laughs> they will never show up. They will only be deceiving people in those, those small, small egg caves, those small, small shines, and be creating confusion and deception and lies and counterfeit and things. They, they don't mind just all that small, small. But when they come out into the open for to come and challenge, they won't do it. You remember the case of Dagon, the god of, uh, it was it Syria at that time, of the Philistines or whatever they called themselves at that time, when they seized the Ark of the Covenant of God from the Israelites, and they said, okay, let's go and put this Ark of the Covenant of God in the same house with Dagon, their own god, so and let's see what happens. That night, they, they put him there. The following morning, when they, got, when they went to their shrine to go and see what happened, they saw their Dagon, their so-called God, prostrating in front of the Ark of the Covenant of God. Go and read it in the book of Samuel. Prostrating. They said, ah, are you not a God? Why are you prostrating before the God of Israel? The God that created the heavens and earth. Stand up. They stood him up. That's image statue. They stood him up. I'm sure that one, if you could speak, because they don't speak, will say, you have given me trouble. You want to put me into trouble with this great God? But he couldn't speak. That's why the, some of the, way the Bible says that this God, the gods, the people of the earth worship, they, are, they cannot speak, they cannot talk, they cannot move, they cannot act, they cannot do good, they cannot do evil. They cannot speak. So that day God could not speak. But he was protesting inwardly, quietly. So they stood him up. Then they went there the following day. By the time they got there the following day, that, that day God, God of theirs was already cut into pieces, into shreds. Ah, they now packed his carcasses out. I'm sure they must have burnt it. They said, you are not a God. If you are a God, why don't you stand in front of this great God of Israel? The God that created the heavens and the earth. The God that was the one that is, the one that forever. You couldn't stand, so you are not a God. Every other God under the planet, that they are, they, are, they are worthless. So they cannot promise you, and you believe them. If they promise you, if at all they tell you a lie, you believe it, you are falling into deception. You have gone to the market to buy counterfeit, to buy fake, to buy lies with your money, hard-earned money, to go and buy counterfeit, something that will be anti your existence. So, God, when we say stand firm, the topic we are speaking this morning is that stand firm in his promises or in his promise. Whatever he has said, said concerning you, just stand in there. Sarah had been barren for years. She was 90 years old. And she was just about 90 years old. When God approached, I said, by this time of life, next year, you are going to have a daughter. I mean, sorry, you are going to have a son. Sarah laughed. Say, at 90, can I give birth at 90? Anyway, before we knew it, she met of course, with the husband, they had intercourse. Exactly nine months as God has spoken. Exactly nine months, she delivered a baby son called Isaac. Hallelujah. The promised child. The child of promise. And Isaac prospered even much more than Abraham the father. Prospered much more. So, 
don't go in the way of disbelief no matter the challenge you are facing right now it could be challenge of a job it could be challenge of housing it could be challenge of marriage it could be challenge of business it could be challenge of finances it could be challenge of relationships Look for the whatever God has said concerning. That's why I said, hey, download the software of the Bible into your device. Begin to read it. As you are reading it, you will see his promise concerning that challenge you are facing. That naughty challenge, that deliberating challenge, that embarrassing challenge. You will see his promise there. Follow through with the promise. For instance, for instance, Somebody says to you, he said, that you will be deported from where you are staying right now. Maybe you are in a country, you will be deported to another country, to your country, very shortly. What do you do? You go to God, Lord, I don't want to be deported. Have mercy upon me. God said, okay, don't worry. Like one woman who was to be deported in uh, somewhere in Europe back to uh, her own country in West Africa. I, you know, I don't like mentioning names of countries. In West Africa, she came, went from West Africa to the European country and they were rounding up immigrants. So, I mean, the illegal immigrants. So she was one of those that was hounded around with others and they went to put them in uh, custody to be deported in about a week or two when they gather more people. And she prayed to God, said, Lord, I don't want to be deported. God said, don't worry, you will, never be de you will not be deported. I want to cut this story so that I can read the scripture for you. Anyway, almost two weeks after she was apprehended, they were being taken to the airport. And uh, she said, God, they are already taking me to the airport. This, you said I will not be deported. These people are already taking me to the airport. God said, don't worry yourself. They will not deport you. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I believe you. She got to the airport. And they were, of course, the plane, they had already loaded those who were legally bound to travel who had tickets. Legal passengers. They had already boarded. So it's the legal, uh, whatever, people they wanted to deport mm -hmm. that were to board the plane last. So they started mm -hmm. putting them one by one into the plane. She was the last but one person at the back. And the immigration officers were standing to the left of her. When she got about to be boarded into the plane. Hallelujah. <laughs> Kai. Uh, the immigration officer, the head of the immigration officer said, Hey, you step aside, you step aside. Do you want to go back to your country? She was the only one that was asked that question. Do you want to go back to the, to your country? She he said no. She said no. I don't want to go back. Said step aside. Hallelujah. What did the immigration officer say? He said I have the prerogative of mercy to say you are to be deported or you are not to, deport, to be deported. She was the only one asked that question out of almost about seventy of them. The immigration officer personally took it upon his own duty to go and help her regularize her documentations for a permanent stay in that country. What made that to happen? The promise of God. I have been waiting for a husband. A, 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 the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. I have not been able to find one. What has God said concerning it? Once he has said, don't worry, you'll be married, consider it a done deal. Forget about the time, because his timing is always best for you. I've been waiting for a wife. I've not found the right wife. Don't worry. What has he said? Stand on his word. <laughs> he will show up for you. It might seem to be late. It might seem to be delayed. But don't worry yourself. Stand firm in his word. Because his word will always surely see the light of day. Irrespective of the circumstances, irrespective of the situation, irrespective of the opposition from adversaries from the kingdom of darkness, the word of God will always prevail concerning you. 
it has always prevailed concerning me. The word of God and his promises wipes away shame and embarrassment. It wipes away struggle and toil from your life. It wipes away begging and boring from your life. It wipes away all kinds of negativity that are distasteful to you. The word of God and his promises, they wipe them away. So if that word will wipe them away, Shouldn't you stand on that word? Shouldn't you stand on the promises? The most powerful person on earth can promise you today that, please come and see me tomorrow. I'll give you a position in my cabinet. I'll give you uh, this. I'll give you that. I'll do this for you. The most powerful man can promise you that. I'm sure you know they can do it. But tomorrow is not guaranteed that he will be alive to fulfill that promise. I've heard there are so many stories about that. Even if he fulfills it, even if he's alive to fulfill it, that promise can also fail. He can, as a human being, can also withdraw that help. He can change his mind tomorrow. Say, oh, sorry. Somebody else has come to take over that position. Sorry, that money I wanted to give you, I have to use it for some, some emergency. So if it's a sorry, I've, you know, human, that's human being. And it might not even be his fault. It could just be circumstances beyond his control that has taken over, that he could not fulfill that promise for you. But the promise of God does not fail. I've not seen barren women too who have always prayed to God after years, mm -hmm. 10 years, 15 years, even 20 years, 30 years. God still gives them their own children just like I just told you about Sarah. Look at the case of Daniel. That they said, ah, if you don't bow down to the God or prostrate to the God of King Nebuchadnezzar, they are going to throw you into the lion's den. <laughs> Daniel just laughs because he knows that God will protect him. God has promised him, the, 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 <laughs> has given him the covenant of protection. He believed in his word. So, so if you throw me into the land, I don't give a damn. But for this, your idol, I will not bow down to it. King Nebuchadnezzar said, ah, you will not bow down. They will, let, I'll tell her, they will say, I will throw you into the land. He said, I will not bow down. Of course, they went to throw him into the lion's den. Before he got into the lion's den, God has already blocked the mouth of the lions so that they could not harm him. Instead of harming him, they were just moving around and probably prostrating also and engaging, rubbing their bodies on him and enjoying his company, <laughs> what they could have eaten. They were enjoying the company of Daniel all night through until the king went there very early in the morning because he was something, somebody so close to the king. He said, oh, Daniel, are you there? He said, my lord, I'm here. My God has closed him out of the, uh, the lions so they could not hurt me. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the promise of God being fulfilled. The same thing with the three boo boys. When they said you should bow down to the idols, they said, well, hell no, we will bow down to the idol." God is more than able to protect us, to shield us from your evil schemes. The king threw them into the fire. God could not wait until they get into the fire so they would not be burnt. God was already in the fire. Covenant of promise of life. He preserved their lives. They came out of the fire on hot. Not even a smell of smoke came out of their body. Because he has promised them life. God has also given you the covenant of life. That means you cannot die before your time. Once God has given you the covenant of life, you will no devil, no demon, no witch, even though your mistake will not allow you to die before your time. Because God will pardon you. He will pardon you. As he said it, you are being oppressed in your place of work. You are not being promoted. What has God said concerning it? Has God promised you promotion? Don't worry yourself. 
you will be promoted. If the person that is blocking your promotion is still boasting that you will not be promoted, then he will have to go on the sick bed for a while, for six months or nine months, giving room for somebody who God will allow to promote you. Hallelujah. Or you might, they might even promote you and put in his, in his position. When he comes back, if, he, if God should have mercy on him, he comes back, he will be under you. God might not even allow him to come back. He might from there retire or even die. What has he said concerning you? Just believe it. Bible says only believe. With God, nothing shall be impossible. So stand firm in his promises and see the salvation of the Most High God over your life, over that situation. And you have no reason not to rejoice. You have no reason not to be joyful. That's what we are enjoying. These promises are not purchasable with money. These promises are only given by That's what we are enjoying. These promises are not purchasable with money. These promises are only given by those who are of God, who belong to Him, whom He has sworn that I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's not purchasable with dollars, millions of dollars or billions of dollars. It's only purchasable by obedience, by living a holy life, by being obedient to him. For whatever he commands you to do, just do it. Once you are in that arena of life of obedience, holiness, you can be sure his promises concerning your life no matter what, we surely see the light of day, irrespective of the opposition. Let them gang up against you and say, ah, he will not be promoted, he will not give back, he will not get married, he will not get that position, he will not get to the exalted position. Let them gang up from here to Japan, I mean Lagos, Nigeria. And you know the distance between Lagos and Japan? Thousands of miles. Let them gang up from here, Lagos to Japan, to Tokyo. They, were, they, are only, they only gather to be scattered against you. Because his promise, irrespective of their plans, will surely see the light of day for you. In the name of Jesus. Only believe. Let me read the book of Isaiah. Hey, man of God, you are always talking story, 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 story. Let me read the book of Isaiah for you. I'm, I'm not the one that wrote it. Is the men of God that wrote it who are inspired with his spirit. Look at what he says here. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1. He said, see, in difficult situations, your joy must be retained. You must not lose your joy. In very terrible, challenging situations of life, don't lose your joy. That's what Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 says. He says, sing, O barren that thou didst not bear. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, that is not bear, that does not have any child. O barren. He said, Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. You have been barren, you have no child, you are not fruitful, your business is not going well, you have just been sacked. Keep singing, keep rejoicing. For many are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. You know, the story of Hannah is a typical example. Hannah, uh, Hannah was barren. She didn't have, have children, a child for years. Penina already had six. But he said, keep singing. Even in that situation, in that challenging situation, your husband is not treating you well, your wife is not treating you well, keep singing to God. Keep praising God. Keep connecting God. God will intervene. The way God will intervene, you'll be begging God for that a recalcitrant husband or wife. You will do what you be what God, God, please have mercy on him. Have mercy on her. When you keep singing, when you are praising God, in that situation, you have just been sacked from your place of work, keep singing, keep praising God, keep appreciating God. I told you, just over two weeks ago, when the incident happened to me, I didn't even know the, where the person was. 
the person was already even in the hospital about to die, dying slowly. But I just started singing unto God. I said, Lord, I praise you, I worship you. Meanwhile, I knew some hospital about to die, dying slowly. But I just started singing unto God. I said, Lord, I praise you, I worship you. Meanwhile, I knew something was wrong somewhere. But the person that I was... was already there dying. Was already there dying. Lord have mercy. So, and I said, I said to him, I said, oh Lord, I'm, I started praising God. I'm worshiping God. I started worshiping God. I'm praising God. In the, in the, in the midst of that terrible situation. And God took it over completely for me and turned it into a testimony. So it is not for you to be critical and be complaining concerning the issue, concerning the circumstances. It is for you to submit yourself to God with joy, without any form of criticism or murmuring. It is in that situation that the, the question will turn around for your good and you will have a testimony in the name of Jesus. So he said, verse 2, let me read for you. Verse 2 says, Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Enlarge it. So, let, I'll give you another example concerning this enlargement. Somebody that doesn't have a child, five years, ten years, still begging God, yet he's going to the uh, baby shop center to buy things of baby in a hopeless situation. Still hoping and hoping and thinking that sooner than later, that child will come, that child will manifest according to God's promise concerning her. So she goes in faith, taking that step of faith, making that movement from point A to point B progressively. Eventually, sooner than later, that promise will manifest in the physical and see the light of day. Because of faith. So you need to enlarge your coast, enlarge your tent in advance, knowing fully well that without an iota of doubt, that promise will see the light. He said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy will always come in the morning, no matter what. Because no situation endures forever. No situation is permanent. So progressively, with time, things begin to change. It begins to get better. It begins to get better for those who put their hope and trust in him. Verse, verse 3. He said, He says, Spare not, lengthen thy course, and strengthen thy sticks. Verse 3 says, For thou shalt break forth in, on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. You will break forth to the right, you will break forth to the left. Your seed shall inherit the Gentiles. And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Hallelujah. That's Isaiah 54, verse 3. Make the, so the dire situation has no choice but to turn it to a testimony. They have to say, all the inhabited places will begin to be inhabited. Desolate places will begin to be inhabited. Hallelujah. All comes with an angle of faith and believe, and standing firm in his promises concerning that situation, that challenge, that circumstance, no matter how bad, if you could deliver Daniel from the lion's den, if you could deliver the tribal boys from the fury fire furnace, of course, he would deliver you too. You are not an exception. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Isaiah 54, verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and thou shalt remember, shall, thou shalt not remember the approach of thy widowhood anymore. Hallelujah. One of the things that uh, usually scares a lot of people 
is the issue of the spirit of fear, of being put to shame or being embarrassed. The fear of shame, the fear of embarrassment always come. To a, a, a lot of people are always afraid of it, but the Bible says fear not. Don't worry. You will overcome those things. Don't bother yourself. You know, in the Bible, it talks about fear not 365 days times in the Bible. That means there is a fear not for each day. Hallelujah. So what am I talking about? No matter what challenge you might be facing right now, Fear not. Be not be afraid. Stand firm in his promises concerning your life. And it will surely see the light of day. Let's go to the book of uh, uh, Psalm 30. Psalm 30, verse 2 to 5. Psalm 30, verse 2 to 5. You know, there's a particular storyline that is said in the Bible that talks of... Uh, uh, whose report will you believe? Usually people find it easier and more comfortable to believe man instead of believing God. Because if we, we, we are not seeing him, it's this far away, it's whatever they are. It's not as far away as you think. It's even closer to you than you think. Than the man you are even talking about is even closer to you. So they believe man. For instance, if they go to the hospital, and the doctor says, ah, sorry, you have cancer. You have to do this. You have to do that. Ah, it cannot be healed. You have to start living with this medication for the rest of your life. You have to use, start using it. You have to do one operation. You have to do that. They would rather believe the medical personnel than if God says, ah, don't worry, you are healed. There's no more trace of it. It's gone. Yet the thing is still there. But God has spoken. It is for you to stand firm. In that which God has spoken, as against that which the medical has spoken. It is for you to stand. That's why it is said that whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? So I'm asking you too are you going to believe the report of your medical personnel that is also subject to God, or you are going to believe the report of God Himself directly? The choice is yours. Me, we stand by God. There's no report from man that goes contrary to what God has said that we will ever believe. It will never happen. <laughs> Who is man? This same man that is giving report can be subject to the same trial and challenges of life. Subject to it. So you want to believe the word vis have is the God that was before the great great grandfather of the medical personnel? <laughs> it's tantamount to foolishness. I'll give you my example before I read the scripture for you in the book of Psalm 30, verse uh, 2 to 5. Uh, when I had a challenge, health challenge some time ago. I told this, I've uh, given this testimony several times, several years ago, I've given this testimony. And I told them, I said, uh, uh, the doctor said, hey, we are going to operate on you. We are going to tear you open and remove the blockage that is inside. I was listening. I was just listening to the sweet mouth of the medical doctor that time. Then. Not that I have a lot of respect for them. They are great people, medical personnel. They are great people. But when it comes between them and God, I choose God first, above them. Because God created them also. He said, we are going to tear you open, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. God said, ah, Abba. I said, I, I, I said, okay. When I got up, I said, Lord, I don't want to do any operation. God didn't answer me that day because I was fearful. The third day, God came and said to me, hey, he said, don't worry, you won't be operated upon. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He gave me a promise. He said, you will not be operated upon. Hallelujah. You will not be operated upon. That was the end of the matter. That was seven years ago. Seven good years ago. No operation. He gave me a natural remedy and fully healed, fully healed, far better than I was before. 
Because I stood on his promises. He said it, he's promised it, and he fulfilled it. Seven years ago, no operation. I'm even looking healthier than the doctor that prescribed the operation to me today. Hallelujah. <laughs> so stand on his promise. Whatever he has said to you concerning it, stand on it. Hang in there. Hang in there. And he will surely show up for you in the name of Jesus. So let me read this one for you as I begin to close. Uh, verse 2 to 5. He said, O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalm 30, verse 2. O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. I cried unto thee. That, see, there is a need for you to cry unto God. I've told you before, and I repeat it again. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. The Bible demands and commands that you should pray ceaselessly. The Bible demands and commands that you should pray ceaselessly. As a Christian, it's a charge. It's not obligatory. It's not optional. It's compulsory. And I was even sharing it. I share it with as many young men as I come across that will listen to me. I said, the person that prays 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day, and still lives a holy life and is obedient to God, will not get the same result as a person who lives a holy life, who is obedient to God, and prays three hours, four hours a day. He won't get the same result. The result, both of them will get, will be different. The result of the one that spends more time in prayer with God will be higher than the one that gets a lesser time in God. Hallelujah. He will, he will, he will enjoy more grace of God. Because the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let me quickly read for you. The, the grace of God is a function of knowledge. Function of knowledge of the closeness of God. Look at what it says. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. More to the more of the knowledge of God, so the more time you spend with Him, the more you connect with Him, the more of His grace you will enjoy. Evil will see you and disappear, disaster will see you and disappear, struggle will see you and disappear, danger will see you and disappear, sicknesses and disease see you, diseases will see you and run away, fizzle away because. Of the knowledge of God you have and your closeness with Him. And if God is a consuming fire and you are close to the consuming fire, all activities of contrary spirit will run away from fire because they know they will be consumed. Hallelujah. That's the way it is. And that's the way it works. Hallelujah. So, let me read the book of. Uh, uh, oh Lord, that's why I say, Oh Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. That's verse 2. Psalm 30, verse 2. Verse 3. Oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Oh Lord, thou hast brought forth my soul from the grave. You see, that's one of the, the extreme areas of, the, of disaster, of challenges, or uncomfortable situation. Somebody who has been dead, God brings his soul out from the grave. Remember the case of Lazarus, who had been dead for it four days? God woke him up. He woke him up from four, four days of death. He said, Lazarus, come forth. What situation could be more dire? Will be more dif difficult? Will be more, will be more challenging than being dead for four days? Yet God mm -hmm. recovered him back. So you are not yet dead. So what is the challenge? You think God cannot recover you? Of course he will recover you back. Hallelujah. Definitely, he will recover you back. Hallelujah. Verse 4. So, verse 4. Verse four. O thou that has brought you from the grave. That, verse 3, sorry. O, o Lord, thou has brought forth my soul from the grave. Thou has kept me alive. I told you. 700 billion people across the globe are being kept alive only by God. Not by their power. 
not by their strength, not by hospital, not by medical personnel, by God only. Because even the medical personnel, they were, they acknowledge, they say we only care, it is God that heals. Even the medical personnel, if God should withdraw their bed, breath instantly today, any of them, the most knowledgeable amongst them, if God should remove his breath, it doesn't allow him to breathe again. That's the end of him. So he's the one that keeps alive. And should, uh, that I should not go down to the pit. It's God that will withdraw you from going down to the pit. Hallelujah. Verse 4, the last verse I want to read there. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints. No, uh, uh, no, not the last verse. Last but one. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Verse 5. He said, For his anger endures but a moment. In his favor is life. He said, Weeping may endure for a night. Did you hear that? I already quoted this scripture for you earlier. He said, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So no matter how long the challenge you are facing, it's only for a night time. Those are the dark areas of your time of life. Those are the challenging times, the dark night. But joy in the morning, a new dawn has started. A new beginning has started for you. The newness of life comes. Thereafter, joy follows. It's a weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. So if you are, no matter where you are, anywhere in the world today, no matter the challenge you are facing, whether with your spouse, whether with your children, with your boss, with your business, with your finances, with your neighbors, with your association, no matter what, those are the dark recesses of night. Remember, in your association, in your connectivity with God, joy will come in the morning. A testimony will come. The miracle will come. Your joy will overflow. Those challenges will become testimony, will go into history. And God will put a new song in your mouth concerning it. Anywhere you are in the world, you could even be the richest man or the richest woman or the most powerful man or the most powerful woman as long as you can connect with God. Your joy will come in the morning, in the name of Jesus, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And this course across the entire planet, Earth. just submit yourself to God. Stand firm, we will come in the morning, in the name of Jesus, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And this course across the entire planet, Earth. just submit yourself to God. Stand firm on his promises. God will show up for you. It might seem as if it's delayed. It might seem as if it's late. But definitely, God will show up for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my brethren. I appreciate you for coming this morning. It's 11.35 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe to my live show. Mm -hmm. It's just a little token. I've always told you, support me. And you also will not like support. Just mm -hmm. support me. You just see, you see the link there. Just uh, subscribe. Six months, three months, subscribe. Even one month, just do the subscribe. I'll buy the tickets. Just do it. God will bless you. It's a seed you are sowing. It will come back to you in multiple fold. In the name of Jesus. Stand on the promises of the word of God. I'm not saying you should. Man also will promise you. You can stand on it, but not as much as you will stand on the word of God. Because God's promise will never fail. Man can fail. Man might not even be alive to fulfill his promises. But God is always there. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. So align yourself with him. Embrace his word. Embrace his promises. And you will never be disappointed. Good morning, my brethren. Peradventure, you are not a member of his kingdom. If you are not a member of his kingdom... His promises will see the light of the but not as sure as the one that belongs to the kingdom. I'm sure you know if you are not a member of an association, what they are distributing with the as 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 within the association will not get to you because you are not a member. But if you are a member, of course, definitely it will get to you. So you want to enjoy all the promises of the word of God in its fullness, 
then you have to be a member of his kingdom. If you are not yet a member of his kingdom, you want to be a member of his kingdom and enjoy all his promises to see the light of day concerning you, just quickly say after me, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I promise to serve you all the days of my life. I renounce all associations with other extraneous gods. I will no longer serve them. Only you will I serve from henceforth. Just be my Lord and Savior. Order my step into my high places and I will be obedient to you all the days of my life. If you have said that, hey, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of the Most High God. You already initiated. <laughs> The initiation into the kingdom of God is very, very simple. You don't have to cut your blood and drink other, pe other people's blood, join it together and start drinking like they do in the other uh, dark associations. I don't want to mention them. So it doesn't look as if I'm attacking them. They know themselves. Everything, just simple. Just accept it. That's the end of the matter. Your, everything about your life changes immediately. Immediately God takes over your battle and begin to fight your battles for you. Immediately, light begins to shine over your life. What you are not seeing before, you begin to see clearly. Hallelujah. You begin to walk in the path of righteousness and holiness, the right of obedience unto God for the rest of your life, and you will fulfill destiny. Hallelujah. Your life will be sweet. Your life will be great. Hallelujah. So, welcome into the kingdom of the Most High God. Find a Bible-believing church around you and begin to go anywhere you are in the world. If there is none, no problem. Start a small fellowship in your house and begin to read the Word of God. As you read the Word of God, you begin to get more understanding, more spiritual, more And you begin to climb from one higher level to another higher level for the rest of your life. <laughs> Isn't that a good place to be? Yeah, you enjoy those who are living in what you, what is referred to as the evil free zone of life. <laughs> when evil sees you, and evil, evil will quickly disappear. see you and disappear because they know God is with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what we are enjoying. That's what we are enjoying. So you too, you begin to enjoy it. And millions of souls are enjoying it across the globe. And you'll be among them. Whether you are living in the Western world, Asian continent, Africa, the Americas, New Zealand, Australia, you enjoy the same thing. It's not restricted to just a few. It's, re it's available to, abundantly available to the entire human being that will just believe and come into his kingdom. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. Have a glorious and wonderful time. I have to exit now and permit you to go and do other things. It's 11.37 a.m. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Bye. Until tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.